Praise the Lord. Amen. It's time to begin church. Let's all stand and go before the Lord and ask Him to move in our service this morning. Thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you for your spirit. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for this wonderful Father's Day. We thank you for being a wonderful Father to us. I pray that you would move in a special way, that you would accomplish your will in our lives by your spirit. And we thank you for all of these things. Hallelujah. And then praise him this morning. Thank him for this day. The psalmist said, this is the day that the Lord hath made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's give the Lord a clap off. Turn in your hymnal if you'd like to page 481. No, not one. Page 481.
trying to make people understand the importance of doing things. And uh, and it just seems like God just keeps bringing this quote back to my mind that Pastor Ocean shared. And it's really helped me out a lot. And I, I want to share it with you so that as you face different things in your own life, you can also make practical application. You know, we're always trying to encourage people to come to church and attend service. We're always trying to encourage people to build a stronger relationship with God. Amen. You know, spend time in your body, pray, you know, just things that you do because you are concerned about people. Yes, sir. It's not about controlling you. Yes. It's not about trying to tell you what to do. It's not, it's not about really trying to run your life. Mm -hmm. It's just trying to help you to live a better life. Yes, sir. And somebody said amen. Amen. But amen. Pastor Olson said something. I've shared this, and I've really applied it to my life. To quit worrying about things and quit being overly concerned. And I was really contemplating whether I should preach on this this morning, but I'm not going to. And, and what I want to say to you, and I want you to really listen to me, because many of you, you got things over here. Thankful for Sister Priscilla. Sister Priscilla, I, I want you to know publicly that we're praying for you. She just lost her yes. brother. And uh, yes. we're praying for you. Yes. And um, and um, and we're going to pray for Felicia here in a minute. Sister Gloria and Sister Stallworth. Sisters, Sister Gloria's daughter. Yes. We're going to pray for her in just a little bit. Amen. So Amen. Uh, I just, there's so much going on this Father's Day. And we have people. So there's a lot of people Ooh. that are having a hard time. That, yes, that, sir. That, uh, yes, hi, sir. sister. How are you? God bless you. And, uh, and we just, I just want you to know that God cares. And yes, that this is, this is not a, a game. This is not uh, something we're doing to make money. This is not something I'm doing to um, uh, build a popularity contest. I'm not trying to see what I can get out of people. Hey, Amen. This, uh, this is real for me. Sir, in amen. my life. Amen. amen. We came to Pittsburgh to help people. Yes. And I know we might not be from here, but sometimes the best person to be involved with is somebody that's not from here. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. Something new, something different. Yes. Amen. Right. Sometimes the same old, same old is just the same old, same old. That's right. right. <laughs> amen. Variety, something different. But getting back to this quote, Stay on track. Stay on track. Amen. Amen. I appreciate my wife. She does help me stay on track. Amen. I mean, uh, he said, I could stand up here today. He was getting ready to preach. He said, and he's the head of our whole church group. He said, I could stand up here and tell you that about things that need to be done, about things that need to be taken care of, people who are not doing the things they're supposed to be doing. All of these things, but he said, I'm not going to do that. He said, I'm going to let God be the head of this. Yes. Amen. Amen. I'm going to stop worrying myself. Amen. Amen. About things I can't control. Yes. Amen. Let God be the head of this. Yes, sir. Amen. There are things that we just can't do, yes. there are burdens that we just cannot bear. Amen. You have to give those burdens to God. Amen. Amen. So that you can function and so that you can be what you ought to be. Amen. Yeah. Let God do the heavy lifting. Amen. You got people that do you wrong. You have things that have happened in your life. God bless you, my 
to drag anybody through the mud. But the fact of the matter is, uh, well, the title of my message this morning is level, let's level up. It's time to level. It's time to get on the next level. Amen. 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 Any old dead fish can float downstream. Yes, sir. Uh, anybody can just go along with the norm and go along with the, with the program. But it takes a real man to stand up. Yeah. And fight against the tide. Amen. And fight against the the the, the, the same old, same old, right? Yes, well, I grew up in the hood and this how we do things. No, 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 no. Amen. I'm God got me out of the hood. Amen. Are you with me? I got out of the hood program. Amen. Amen. <laughs> God delivered me from standing on the corner shaking and job. Are you with me playing cracks? Amen. Uh, acting a fool. I mean, I, I guess I shouldn't say that, but, you know, but it's the truth, right? It's the truth. Amen. Amen. God delivered me. God delivered me from that. You know, uh, running around just trying to see how many women you can mess up. Amen. We have to get delivered from that garbage. And, and, and really, sometimes it's the other way around. God bless you, folks. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Amen. We appreciate you. Yes, sir. Just come in, have a good time. Don't don't keep your feet up and sail the place. All right. Yes, sir. But but anyway, what I'm saying is, it's time to take it to the next level. Yes, sir. Amen. It's time to take it to the next level. But anyway, so what I'm trying to emphasize to you, whatever burdens you're bearing, whatever things are going on in your life, whatever is happening in and around your life that's pulling on you, that's drawing you. That's, that's, that's causing you all kind of mental and emotional strain and stress and problems. You have to leave the heavy lifting to God. Amen. 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 Don't try to bear things you're not equipped to handle. Amen. Can I get a witness? Amen. So we're praying. When I tell you that I'm praying, I really mean that. I'm praying. Amen. Sometimes, you know, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, there was a joke made that said, when a black person tell you I'm praying for you, that was the prayer. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I'm, I'm praying. <laughs> yeah. um, <laughs> I hope it's okay to say that. I hope you know, everybody's so sensitive. We also, why uh, don't you get that chip off yeah, your shoulder, man? Laugh a little uh, while. Amen. 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 You, you, see that skeleton, you see that skeleton in that blind right there? <laughs> Y'all know what I'm about to say, right? That's a black person waiting on you to pick them up. But anyway, they, they still in the little turkey to us? I'm just saying, we're having a good time. Yeah. Don't, don't mind me. But uh, we're having a good time. Uh, we're not racist. We're not crazy. Right. Amen. Amen. We even love Reverend Steele. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. We appreciate yes, Reverend Steele. Our nickname is the Italian Stag. Amen. He's, uh, he's a good man. He really is a good man. And pray his father is, uh, is, is uh, in a facility and uh, having a difficult time. And uh, I told him to still wish his father a happy Father's Day to the degree yeah. uh, he's, he's having a really challenging medical issue. Right. Amen. So pray for him, okay? Yes, and uh, it's, it's hard. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's difficult. And I lost my own father. Many of you, everybody's got their own story. Uh, whether it be a father not being in your life or whether a father in your life and circumstances and everything. My father uh, passed away in 1995. Uh, in a tragic car accident. And I told, I, many of you heard me tell the story uh, from time to time about how my father spent a long time in prison. He got out in 1980, I think. He got out in 1980 and died in 1995. So after he got out, I only got to spend, what was that, 15 years maybe? And he was gone. Yes. Amen. But I thank God he got to see me graduate from high school. Yes. I thank you. Not only was he there, he was there when I marched in the band. I was the section leader in the tuba section. He was at the first 
my first performance. He was there for that. Amen. I thank God he was he was there for my first time I marched in the band in the, in, in the game because I couldn't play football. I was too small. So I said, well, I'm still be at the game some kind of way, so I joined the band. All right? And uh, so I was too small to play. So he was there for that. He was there to see me graduate from High school, he was there for my seminary graduation. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. And I'm thankful for that. He got to see me uh, graduate from seminary and, 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 and on and on and on. So Amen. I'm thankful for those things. Amen. 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 He got to hear me preach many a times <laughs> and uh, come and visit and spend time and everything. So uh, I'm thankful for those. I'm thankful for what God gave me. Yes, sir. Amen. 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 You sit around try to think about well, what about it? I can't I can't concern myself with what else. Man. So but anyway, before we move forward and minister, thank first of all, thank you for being here. Thank you for being a part. I want to encourage you to continue to come. Yeah. I want you to invite other people. Yeah. Keep 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 coming, keep being involved. If all you can come is on Sunday, be faithful. Be yeah. faithful. If all you can come is Sunday and Sunday night, be faithful. Amen. Whatever it is you're able to do, yeah. be faithful in that. Amen. And as you're being faithful in those things, God will help you to grow and, then, and to another yeah. area, to another area. So we're not here to hammer you. We're not here to find fault with you. I'm not here to criticize you. What I say, what did I just tell you? I'm going to let God do the heavy lifting, right? <laughs> he let God do the heavy lifting. You think God doesn't know how to deal with people? You think God doesn't know how to talk to you when you ain't doing what you're supposed to be doing? Not supposed to, supposed to be. Uh, you, don't, you, don't think God, you don't think God knows how to get your attention? Sure he does. Amen. He gets mine all the time. Amen. So I know if he can get mine, I know he can get yours, right? Hey, he's good at that. And then if you don't do that, he's got a woodshed. You know what a woodshed is? It's, it's where you don't want to go. It's when God grab you by the arm and start dragging you to that woodshed. It's like, like that paddle with, no, with the holes been drilled through it. You know you know what time it is. Oh, I done messed up. Like my mother used to say, she used to say, let me get by, let me get by, let me get by. And then she finally said, boy, I'm going to whip you to times get better. <laughs> but, and, that, and that's when I said, oh, man, I've done it, and then she starts screaming, and her eyes start going crooked, and, uh, and I'm like, oh, man, why didn't I just do it? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But, but anyway, we're having a good time. It's Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. And then we're just sharing. We're having a good time. You know, laugh. Laughter is a good medicine. Yes, sir. But, you know, my friend that I told you that. Just suffered all that tragedy with the, his wife and daughter. And got, I called him yesterday and I just had him laugh. I said, You remember when we was growing up when this happened and that happened? Man, he about fell out laughing. <laughs> and, uh, and, and everything, and some of the things that we went through and experienced. And I just, I just, I told him, I said, Laughter is like medicine. Yes, sir. Laughter yes, is sir. like medicine. Yes. And I said, Just take it. I said, God. I said, just take it day by day and focus on raising them, two, them three little ones you got. Yes, Amen. And you'll be fine. Yes. Amen. God will help you. God will take care of you. Amen. Amen. He will. Amen. Plus, he got shot in the leg in the process of all that. Amen. But you know what? God is good. Amen. God is good. So what we're going to do right before we go forward, we're going to pray for Felicia. Amen. The doctors are trying to say that this is uh, they, they see this or this might possibly be that or the other. We're not going to claim any of it. Amen. Right. We're just going to go to God in prayer. Amen. Amen. How many of you believe in prayer? Amen. Amen. How many of you believe in prayer? Yes. How many of you believe in prayer? Amen. I want you to stand with me right Amen. now. Hallelujah. And let's just lift the yes. up in prayer. Uh, Sister April, sister, Sister Glory. Glory.
Uh, she's here visiting us April Butler, for those of you that may not know who she is. If yeah. you can just look at her there, yeah. April looked just <laughs> like her. But she's up there working with the children. Amen. Amen. But, uh, uh, Sister Gloria, would you stand and testify and just share some goodness from God today? Appreciate you being here. Amen. And then I have another scripture for you, and then we're going to move. 
Bible says, submit yourself to God. Amen. Resist the devil, and he what? If he was all that powerful, why is it that by the simple fact that you surrendering your life to God, and then once you've done that, you tell him to get out your face, he has to go. Amen? Amen? Because you're doing it in the authority of God. Amen. Amen. And 
wouldn't been able to live with myself. Somebody, somebody do something with one of my children. I just can't do that. Sure. I just rather sacrifice and not go. Sure. Amen. I wasn't right. trying to run the streets. Amen. And leave my kids with somebody because I got all these weird and strange appetites. I ain't got to do nothing. I went to work. I came home. I was with my wife. We 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 took care of our children. Amen. We raised them. Amen. Now my wife is college educated, very smart, very intelligent. Went to the University of Arizona, went to Arizona State University, majored in child uh, what is that? Social work. So and she worked at the bank in years gone by. So she had abilities, but we cho but she chose to stay at home while I worked and we lived beneath. We lived within our means. We didn't we we never had two incomes. Never. Amen. But we raised four children with one income. Amen. But we didn't live in a palatial manner. We didn't drive expensive cars. But I tell you what, our children was looked after. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. And there was a whole lot of days we ate beans. We ate, we ate pork and beans and rice. It was pretty good. They cut them hot dogs up in that. Amen. They peas in a blanket, took some of them biscuits, you know, them, them ready-made biscuits and hooked them little, them little hot dogs up, put them in there. And, uh, and all that kind of, we just, we ate the best we could with it, right? And uh, boy, I tell you, it was rough. I ain't gonna lie, it was rough. It was rough sometimes. Sometimes we, I have no idea how we did it. I really don't, to be honest with you. Amen, but we did. Amen, yeah. yeah. We, we, yeah. we know, but still, I can't comprehend it. Right. You yeah. understand what I'm saying? We know we did. Yeah. But it's like I can't comprehend the little money that I made. The little, I didn't make that much money on my jobs. Amen, but somehow. And then we, I was, I was pioneer church, three three different churches, not only making any money, amen, and I don't know how it did, amen, but we know who did it, but I can't understand how he did it. Yeah. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. But anyway, that's a, we, we don't need to get bogged down in that, right? But I'm just telling you, we never, my wife, just, she, we're going to stay at home, and, and I'm going to make sure that when they get home, somebody is there. Ain't gonna be no latch key. Amen. Amen. Ain't gonna be no latch key. Not not in this house. Not if not if we're together. You know what I'm saying? It's different if you're single. That you know you get to do what you gotta do. I'm just trying to explain to you in a Christian in Christianity, when you when you when you let God give you somebody. Amen. Yes. Is this okay? Even if it ain't, it's still okay. Right? When you let God give you somebody, and then you do it biblical. Amen. Then it'll work out. I'm not saying there won't be challenges, but I tell you what, serving God pays off. Yes, sir. Are you with me? Amen. I said serving God Amen. pays off. Yes. Yes. Yes, sir. And I really believe it does. I really believe it does. Amen. So, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, and uh, I just want to read a few verses to you. Uh, from what is considered the love chapter in the Bible. 1 Corinthians chapter 13 is, uh, is considered the love chapter. Matter of fact, we was in seminary. Uh, pastor made us remember the whole chapter. He said, when you come to class, I want you to be able to quote the whole chapter because you don't know who I'm going to call on to say, say, okay, what does verse 9 say? Okay, what does verse 3 say? Okay, what does verse Man, if you don't know it, you're going to be surprised. You know what I'm saying? He was just trying to make us understand how important the love of God is. Yes. That's all he was trying to do. All right. Verse 8. We're not going to read the whole chapter, even though we could read the whole chapter. It would be a real blessing. Charity never fails. But whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. I want to insert something here real quickly. Uh, there are churches and, and uh, denominations that preach that tongues were done away with, right? They teach that tongues were done away with, and they use this scripture. They say, okay, I don't, I, I, we don't believe in speaking in tongues, right? And okay, 
Let's say if we're going to do that. Let's say to tell you how ignorant this is, uh, uh, to tell you how ignorant this is, if you're going to use this scripture for that, then the other things in here, it said those they were done away with too. Look at it. It didn't just say tongues, it said prophecy. So that means there shouldn't be no prophesying. There shouldn't be no knowledge. You shouldn't have knowledge of the things of God. I mean, we might if we're gonna take if we're gonna just take out what we don't want to hear or what we don't want to agree with, then we're gonna have to take all of it out, right? So that tells you how silly and uh, uh, uneducated people can be sometimes with the scriptures. He said, whether there be tongues, they shall cease, whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. It doesn't, it doesn't, it, that doesn't even make sense. Okay? But moving right along. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. So, but when that which is perfect is come, talking about Jesus, talking about the Lord, amen, he is coming back. Yes, sir. I said, did you hear what I said? Amen. He is coming back. Then that which is in part, in other words, we have very uh, fine, it, you know, very limited knowledge of things, don't we? There's, and then there's also a lot of things we just don't know, right? But when Jesus comes, we gonna know it all. I said we gonna know it all, yeah. amen. But anyway, for we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come, verse ten, then that which is in part shall be done away. When I was a child, this is the verse that we want to look at this evening. <laughs> we look at it this evening. <laughs> But anyway, when I, was, when I was a child, but I would like for you to treat yourself. I would like for you to treat yourself. What do you mean by that? You mean just go to Dairy Queen, Pastor? No, no, no. Although I don't mind now, I'll get me a peacock plus a blizzard if we're going to go. But we're not doing that right now, right? We're not doing that. I'll, I'll come back tonight. Reverend Steele will preach. Amen. That'll be a treat for you. All right? He has all kinds of candy and ice cream and, and, and his message for you. All right. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. That, that kind of sounds like some people we know, don't it? Oh, anyway, I, did I say that? Uh, what, what, was the, what the earth was the day? I had any man. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, would you like to quote that with me? But when I became a man, say that with me, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. Are you with me? But when I I put away. The Bible didn't say they just kept on doing it. The Bible didn't say we just continued in that way. But the Bible said he put away. When I became a man, the word became is a, like a progressive word. It means that you matured and grew into it, right? We don't, you don't become a man overnight. You don't become a woman overnight, right? It takes time. It takes effort. It takes work. It takes uh, experiences. It takes uh, uh, difficulties and challenges that you may face in life that cause you to come into a certain understanding. And everyone that still loves God, say amen. amen. Say, Pastor, we're waiting in some deep water here right now. I, I have to make sure I let me put my waders on to go in with you. All right? Put your waders on. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. I'm preaching on the next level. Amen. The next level. Amen. Let us pray. Sir. I became a man. I put away, I'm trying to 
God, we care about the work of God. We care about God's word. We care about the spirit of God. We care about the people of God. That's why we text you. That's why we call you. That's why we come visit. That's why we care about you. That's why we go out of the way to see you. Why? Because we love God. Amen. Amen. I'm hearing someone stay with me. And then the Netherlands. The Netherlands means expressing goodwill and kindness. Huh? Expressing goodwill. It's important to be kind to people. Yeah. Yeah. On my job, I, I go in and out of medical facilities all the time. And I see so many elderly people going to the appointments. And, and, uh, and, and, and I can tell that just by the simple fact that I make sure that I go out of my way to say, how you doing this morning? And man, there was some older people got on the elevator with me. I said, man, there's a lot of history on here. <laughs> and uh, they like that. They like that. They talk to you. They tell you about their troubles. And they tell you about, well, I have to go to the doctor today and, and different things. And I make sure I take time to talk to them. Yeah. I got a chance to talk to a man that used to play for the Steelers. He was at the, uh, he wasn't on the championship team. He left right before the championship. 74, I think. He was drafted in 1965, wasn't it, Brother Steele? 64. 1964, and he played for the Steelers for 10 years. He played for Pitt, and then he had the oxygen in. He was all old and broke down and everything. He had his, his, his family there helping him, and uh, he got on the elevator. I was talking to him, and she, she said, tell him about how you played for the Steelers. <laughs> tell, him, tell him about how you uh, worked in the office at the 49ers and how you worked for the Penguins. And I said, man, that was nice. It was cool. Mm -hmm. Amen. And everything. But I'm talking about being kind. Yeah. Being kind to people. Yes, sir. Uh, it's not, I don't care about them. They don't care about me. I don't care about them. It's not. When you love God, when you have the love of God in your heart, are you benevolent when you have the love of God in your heart? You're fond of the things of God. Amen. Amen. Love is a powerful thing. Yes, sir. Love is a motivator. Yes. When you love God, you'll love your wife. When you love God, you'll love your children. Yes. When you love God, you'll love being a man. You'll love being a woman. You'll love being something to people. And in the midst, think about 
this. While you're out there and you, you're trying to be accepted, you're trying to fit in, you're trying to look this way or that way so you can be accepted or people can look at you and say, I'm this and I'm that, I'm representing this and I'm representing that. In the middle of that, you get caught up in addiction. In the middle of that, you get caught up in relationships you shouldn't be in. In the middle of that, you start getting sucked into this thing and that thing and the other. The next thing you know, you're mentally messed up. You're emotionally messed up. You're physically messed up because of the rough life you live. You broke your body down and on and on and on. Why? Because you was doing what you wanted to do. Amen. Yeah. What's the answer? <laughs> What's the answer to failed relationships? What's the answer to the right lifestyles? What's the answer to telling lies? What's the answer to cheat? What's the answer to get money no matter how whatever you have to do to get it? Uh, what's the answer to it? The answer to it is putting away childish things. Yeah. Are you with me? Yeah. Putting away childish things. It's childish to live our life immature. Well, Pastor, you've been defining everything else. Define for me what childish is. Well, childish means not speaking. You know how it's, it's the same definition. It's the definition in Greek of a, of, a, of, a, of a baby or a child at the age to where they can't talk yet. They can't communicate with you the way you would like for them to communicate with you. They can't grasp and they can't understand on the on a certain level, huh? Are are you with me? Are you are you listening? I'm trying to explain something to you, and it's talking about an infant or a small child or simple-minded or immature, simple-minded or immature. Okay, simple-minded. We must grow up mentally, emotionally. Spiritually to get to the next level. Yes, sir. Amen. Huh? Right. Huh? Right. We must get past the point of doing what you want to do. Right. Huh? You are never going to get to the next level being selfish. You're never going to get to the next level doing things how you want to do them. Yeah. He said, when I was a child, I spake as a child. I thought as a child, I understood as a child, but when I became a what? Man. That word man means mature, responsible. Are you with me? But when I became responsible, when I got to the point to where I understood that I need to change and that I need to do things differently and that I need to grasp and understand that this is not how life works. It's more important to be responsible. I put away childish things. It's, 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 it's mature to budget your money. Yes, sir. It's mature to pay your bills. Yes. It's mature to take care of your family. Yes, sir. It's mature, amen, to make sure that you set the proper example for your family, yes. men and women. It's mature to let them see God in your life. Amen. It's mature to teach them to pray yes. over their food. It's mature to teach them, uh, to, to let them see you not going out, making a mess of your life. Yeah. I'm not going to bring activities to the house that could hurt and destroy my child. Yes, sir. not going to do it. Amen. I'm not going to do things that will cause me to not have control of myself. I'm not going to sit up here and get high and get drunk and then I can't function. And then my children are watching me uh, acting and behaving and carrying on. Uh, it's time uh, to take it to the next level. Uh, it's time uh, to come into God uh, and say, God, forgive me. Uh, God, help me. Uh, I want to do better. Uh, I want to become what you want me to become. Uh, it's time to step up. Uh, manhood uh, is stepping up uh, and growing up. In your mind and in your heart. Yes, sir. 
a cereal box? Huh? Not really. Amen? Not really. And not only that, you have to pray. You have to pray. Man, this, like I told you, this ain't no game for me. I'm serious about this. Yes. Ever since we've been here, people who know, that's why some people don't want to mess with me. Amen? They come here and they see that they say, this, ain't no way that this can be this real. Ain't no way that this is this way. Ain't no way it can be that way. Yes, it is. person of responsibility. So I want to share with you while I got it. Oh man, it's already up. I'm already past time, bro. It's 12 o'clock. I can't even believe that. Where did the time go? Keep it going. Keep it going. Keep it going. Man, you gotta be kidding me. Keep it going. Don't stop. Let the, let the Holy Ghost lead. Just give me, just give me 10 minutes. 10 minutes, okay? Babe, when 10 minutes come, raise your hand. I'll stop. I, I keep you. Now, give me 10 minutes. It's Father's Day, so we can count. Out. <laughs> you can take 20 with me. <laughs> no. I'm talking about families. I'm talking about children. I'm talking about, I'm talking about something that will revolutionize our neighborhoods. Yes. I'm talking about something that will send a man back home. Yes. I'm talking about something that will put a man on his knees. You say, God Amen. forgive me. God forgive me for the wrong that I have done. God forgive me for not treating that wrong at right. And God forgive me for not raising and being there for my children. God forgive me for not being honest, for not being real, for thinking more about my flesh than I did my family, for thinking about the far more than I did my family, for thinking about running with my friends more than I did my family. I'm talking about something that can be a reality in your life. You got to get saved. You got to get saved, though. That's where it's at. But anyway, 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 3 through 4. Of course, there's no way I'm going to get done with you, but you know that. I have 16 characteristics of love that I need to share with you, but that I'm not going to get to. So that's not going to happen. All right? The only way I can probably finish this up is I do a part two next week. Amen. I may do that. Say, that's good, Pastor, because I don't want to be here. Be careful. Be careful saying you won't be here. Okay? I was riding along in the cemetery one time. We was burying one of my loved ones. And it, it was during the year when we had several deaths. And I told the guy in the funeral car, I said, man, I hope I don't see you no more this year. He said, the next time, you better hope we see you. Uh, I changed that to him real quick. Are you with me? Be careful saying, Pastor, you ain't going to see me the next time. Don't do that. Do you hear me? Don't do that. And then don't play with God like that. Amen? Sometimes you, sometimes you need to keep your, keep your thoughts to yourself. Amen? Like, I, t I told you guys about this man that stood up and testified in church and said he would come to church more often, but his job was more important. Do you not know about that? A few days later, he died on his job. He died on the job. Huh? Don't, be, don't, 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 this ain't no game. I'm telling you. Be careful. I ain't coming back the next time. I don't want to hear all that. And that's why our society is the way it is. Because when we are faced with the truth, the truth is so devastating and so real. Sometimes it's hard to receive. It's hard to take. Because we're so used to uh, it's like a, 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 an old dog that's been eating on the old bone, the old dry bone for a long time. Yes. And then somebody come along and stick a steak out there. <laughs> I'm sticking a steak out there for you. Yes. You're going to keep gnawing on that old dry bone you've been gnawing on. Well, I like being there on pastor. I like being this. I like running the streets. I like, I like my kid, my dog, where I am. That's all right. Somebody out there is going to say, Pastor, give me that steak. Give me that steak. Because I know that it will give me the nourishment that I need so that I can be what God wants me to be. Yes, sir. Amen. Oh, 
thou therefore endure hard as a what? Good soldier of Jesus Christ. This, this <laughs> being saved is not for boys. Being saved is not for girls. Amen. Now I'm not saying children, God doesn't love children, but you know what I'm saying. I'm talking about as far as walking with God and living for God and being saved and all. I'm talking, it is for people who have mature thinking. Because you have to take God seriously. You have to be committed to this. You have to be devoted to this. Endure hardness. That means that somewhere along the line, you're going to have to deal with some things. And if you're not mature, you're going to take off. Like you do all the time when it gets hard. Just take off and go get, get drunk. Take off and go get high. Take off and go find another party. Take off and go lose yourself in whatever it is you're doing. Instead of standing up there and saying, okay, I'm going to deal with this today. Yeah. Amen. God, give me the strength. God, give me the wherewithal to deal with this so I can go to the next level. Amen. Oh my God. And then, no man walk, no man that walk He's talking about being a good soldier, enduring hardness. He said, no man that warring, in other words, if you're in the battle, fighting with God and for God, amen, you do not entangle yourself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him with whom he hath chosen him to be a soldier. You know what? When you serve God and when you're dealing with things, you can't get entangled with the affairs of this life. God's got to be your devotion. Yeah. I said, God's got to be your devotion. Right. Amen. And that's what I'm talking about becoming a man, going to the next level. Amen. And when we're serving God and when we're what we're supposed to be, you can deal with your wife. You can with your children, you can deal with the job, you can deal with the finances, because you're not all entangled up with the affairs of life. God is your strength. God is your direction. God is your help. Then the Bible says, I will lift up my eyes unto the hills from which cometh my what? My help. My help that cometh from the Lord that made what? Heaven and earth. Stand with me today. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, Going to the next level. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Going to the next level. When I was a child, I spake as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child. But when I became a man, when I became responsible, when I got to the point to where I was ready to do things on a mature level, I put away, I put away childish things. Amen. Stop trying to shortcut and do this and shortcut and do that. Amen. Do illegal activities and all these kinds. Of, we need to get rid of that childish. Amen. And start doing things the right way. Which means there's work and effort and the challenge involved. That song say, sing with me how great God, our God is. I love that. Yeah. How great, how great is our God. 